morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's call. Coach Mike Husson, and I hope you're doing great. I hope you have some great plans for this coming week. Speaking of plans, where are you with your business plan for 2019? Hope you're getting it done, completed, getting it to your team leaders, your coaches, your trainers, your brokers, your family, getting it out there, and let's get it done and get it completed and make it happen because you got it around the corner. I think it's like, what, 28, 27 days before we hit the 1st of January, so let's hope you're getting prepared for that. And get it done this week, guys. Don't wait. You want to know what you're going to do, and you need to get it evaluated and make sure the numbers all look good and everything is in place, and you're going to make it happen. And thank you guys for the ones that have sent me your plans, and they've been great, and uh, we're going over them piece by piece, and uh, it's going to be great. So, guys, a very important call today. And, uh, again, as I noted here in my notes uh, to you guys this morning, this is not about a strategy for lead follow-up. I know I've talked about it before, and I'll probably continue to talk about it into the future. However, today is something a little bit deeper than that. And the question is, why don't we call the people that we have leads with? Okay, And you have leads, and but you haven't really called them back. And you feel guilty. You start build, building this guilt in yourself, and you and you and you just don't do it and you don't pick up that phone so the problem is the guiltier you feel the less likely that you're going to pick up the call pick up the phone to make the call and the less likely that you're going to call the less likely you're going to make the call and so after a while you decide that the lead that you have is now no good it's cold it's not going to do anything so why even bother you start justifying this to yourself and then ultimately you never call back now, have you ever been there? I know I have, and I know that you, there's, there's great people out there who, even at the very best of their abilities and their talents in this business of selling and real estate, have that same thing going on sometimes more often than we thought they did. Okay? In fact, guys, if you continue to carry on this guilt and subconsciously you don't want to generate any more leads, Okay. Unconsciously, I've mentioned this before, we carry around these leads, we don't make the call, we start to feel guilty, and then at the end of the day, we make a decision, well, I'm not going to call these leads because I didn't call the ones that I already have. So why even go through this whole process of generating leads in the first place if I'm not going to call them? And guys, it's a vicious cycle that tears you apart, even as I said, the seasoned agents who are going through the same challenge. So without realizing it, we now have entered into what we call the call reluctance death spiral, and it starts to tear us apart, and we start to crack up, and we don't do anything. So the question is, guys, how do we get out of the spiral, pick up the phone, and get some appointments that are really important to our business, this fundamental thing that we must do? And call reluctance is simply a malfunction, as I like to say, a malfunction in your mindset. It's your inner game of what's going on inside of your mind. So if you change your inner game, you change your mindset, you can spark a new energized action to get you guys to the next level in this process. So here's the bottom line. Change your mindset. It changes everything. Change the way you look at what you're looking at, and it changes everything. So I'm going to give you some tips. I'm breaking this call into two different parts because it is going to be long. Not, in this, not these calls, but if I did it all in one, it would probably take about 20, 25 minutes to do this whole call. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to break it into two parts because I want you to look at these two things separately. And then we'll tomorrow put together a plan so you can break through finally on this whole process. So as I said, if you change your mindset, you change everything. And there's a great saying that Wayne Dyer says. He says, when you change the way you look at things, the things that you look at will change. When you change the way you look at things, the things that you look at will change. So I want to help you today with some thoughts on neutralizing these effects of call reluctance and get you back on the phone as soon as possible. Because, guys, you've got to get, you got to get through this, and you know it's important whether you're calling for new leads, you're following up with old leads, whether you're following up with your centers of influence, whether you're negotiating a transaction – or you're calling a seller to confirm an appointment that you don't want to confirm because you're in fear that they're going to cancel the appointment on you, even a buyer, same thing. So we've got to get over this call reluctance area and really move through it uh, through this whole process. Okay. So point number one, I want you to write this down. If you're taking notes, great. If not, make sure you go back to the recording at realprofitbuilders.com. 
pull it down, sit down, listen to it, and write these thoughts down, and revisit them consistently, as I hope that you're doing. And I want to suggest, I never did this before, but I would suggest that you make a binder or a journal uh, just for these calls, and I think it will help you as you can go back to it, just like any kind of book. Anyway, let's move forward here. So point number one, we've got to remember who we are. We got to remember who we are. You got to remember who you are. Okay. One of the big reasons agents suffer from call reluctance is they feel like a fraud or they feel inadequate or they feel like they're an imposter. Okay. The bottom line, guys, if you're not 100% sold on your ability to produce the results for your clients, then you're going to tend to avoid selling situations. You're not going to want to be in that confrontational arena. Okay. You know you're being stopped by these feelings of inadequacy or feeling like a fraud when your mind chatter starts to begin talking to you in your head and saying things like, well, can I really handle their needs? Will I be able to answer all of the questions will I look like an idiot if I don't know the answer to something other agents know more than me or I don't have what it takes or I don't sell many homes or I haven't sold any homes so gosh I'm really in fear so what we want to take a look at guys is a couple of ways to break through this process and I'm going to start with one of them today and it's called reframing okay as we begin to understand this mindset that we have going on we've got to reframe as I said we have got to change the way we look at what we're doing in order to get to the next level we have to change what we look at and when we change what we look at and how we think about it then we can break through at higher levels so so this reframing process will take you through some simple questions that we have to ask ourselves because at the end of the day when we're looking at something we have a certainty about the way we are looking at it especially most especially when we have a lot of fear going on or we have a lot of rejection happening or we have a lot of, of, of mindset thoughts like I'm a fraud or I can't make this work or I'm not talented enough all of those things so we have to reframe the way we look at what we're going to do so let's look at some things that we could do and change the context of this fraud thought okay this imposter feeling that we're having and let's ask ourselves some questions okay since I and that this is for you to ask yourself these questions so since I've taken the time in my real estate business to get my license to attend classes to assign, to, uh, to surround myself with other real estate estate professionals do I have and this is key do I have more experience knowledge and training than the typical buyer or seller and the answer is of course absolutely yes you have that means you have a lot more knowledge of real estate than the typical buyer or seller you aren't finished then you in this whole process either you're going to learn more you will continue to learn and you will continue to grow your entire career that being said right now in this moment chances are you are far more experienced than any buyer or seller in the marketplace right now that means that you can help them point number two or question number two am I willing Am I willing to grow and evolve based on each of the new and interesting and challenging situations that I find myself in? Of course you are. What else can you do? You're constantly learning and adapting to each new situation. You've got you to give yourself a break and just be in the process of getting better at your craft. That's why I'm always constantly on you guys to make sure that you're practicing and going over this process over and over again. Making this call making a call is just a part of the learning process we all learn throughout every stage of our careers and even people who are avoiding calling are learning all the time even if you're not picking up the phone you're still learning all right the next point I want you to write down am I committed to doing my best to help buyers and sellers have a successful real estate transaction well of course that's all you can do that's your job to help make the process better and it changes every time sometimes you're super energized on your game and other times you're just sluggish and slow but that's a part of the game all right guys remember you are not perfect and frankly nobody is and if they claim to be or you feel that they are just understand that they have their imperfections I was talking to a client the other day and I believe this more than anything there's imperfection in the perfection that we are or excuse me there's perfection in all of the imperfection that we're going through 
All right. So quit pretending that you have to be perfect. Quit pretending that you have to be all that. All right. No one expects you to be. Your prospects don't expect you to be perfect. What they do expect from you is to do the very best that you can. All right. So you have to tell your mindset that this is not true. I am as good as I can be at this given moment, and that's all okay. It, guys, it really is okay. So do your best in all that you can do. And if you hit a snag, you just got to figure out what to do. And frankly, my opinion is go out there and ask for some help and get back in the game again. And the next point I want you to write down is this. Do you know everything that there is to know about the, a real estate transaction? No, you probably don't. I know I don't. I was asked a question the other day, and I've been in this business for over 36 years. And I hear these things very often, these lot of questions. I'm always engaged from title to law to contracts to negotiations, whatever the case is. And I didn't really have a particular answer, so I had to seek out what I needed to do. So, of course not. We don't all have the answers. It's not having the answers that doesn't make us a fraud. It makes you normal, guys. And stop holding yourself to that standard and of demands that you have to know everything before you help somebody else out. This is ridiculous, and it keeps you from making the calls. The next question I need you to ask yourself is, here is the most important question of them all, okay? And when you have been confronted with a challenge, a problem, or a crisis, have you found a way to overcome that obstacle or even maybe learn from it? Think about that question. Have you ever been confronted with a challenge, a problem, or a crisis in your life? Have you found a way to overcome that obstacle or maybe even learn from it? Of course you have. We all have. But I suspect that you don't give yourself any credit for that. You don't look at those times when you've had the challenges or the crisis and you, have an, and you came up with a solution. You don't look at it. You look what's in front of you. You don't look what you learned from something in the past. Now, guys, is the time to recognize you know how to get through all kinds of situations and that you didn't know how to get through it when you first started, but you started to get through it because you figured out solutions. So are you really a fraud or are you learning, growing, evolving, and becoming a better agent? Guys, you are learning. You're on this call today. You're listening to this recording, and everyone is learning. You have taken great strides in making great decisions by even being here today is a great stepping stone. And, guys, remember, you're always growing, you're always evolving, and you're always becoming better at what you do. So one thing to remember, success is a series of failures and breakdowns that cause us and help us to grow. Okay, success is a series of failures and breakdowns that help us to grow. When you look at the top agents in this business, you see someone who has practiced the process of managing failure and breakdowns. That's what it comes down to. You look behind, as I talked about the other day, that wizard behind the curtain. What goes on behind that curtain? All of these folks, that the, these top producing people, have gone through these failures and these challenges, and they have well and they have figured out how to manage them so they can continuously move forward. Okay, guys, they face the, the same challenges that you and I do, and they simply have made the peace and they have accepted the fact that they're going to constantly be confronted with new problems because at every level, guys, whether you're you're brand new or you're well seasoned, at every level there's going to be a new challenge and a new problem. Accept it, be okay with it, and now let's move on. So today I want you to vow to make, uh, to make a vow to yourself right now to stop pretending like you know everything, stop pretending like you have to have it all together, and simply dedicate yourself to learning when you're confronted with something that you do not know. You've got to begin neutralizing this fear. And fear of failure, guys, will stop you dead in your tracks and in your mindset process and in this game that you're playing with on your inner game, it can help you if you understand this reframing process, it will help you get back on track. Again, change the way you look at things, the things that you look at will change. Guys, remember, you know, fear is, as I studied this process of understanding fear and what it's all about, it's a biological response to danger. Okay, the problem is picking up the phone really isn't dangerous at all. I mean, there's nothing more than somebody saying no to you, although our body and our mindset 
interprets it differently. It's a big freak out for us, okay? So awareness is the key. And being on this call today, hopefully will give you some awareness. So the first thing you need to do is call out this bullshit that you're going through in your mind, excuse my language, but this BS that's going on in your mind, this mind chatter. And it's trying to protect you. At the end of the day, your mindset and all of these things that are going on in your mindset, it's really trying to protect you from from making mistakes again and again. But listen, don't let that work on you. You got to work on it yourself and you got to be okay that it understands that you have to understand that you can break through if you just simply make the decision. So I want to get real critical for one moment and then we'll wrap this call up today. Yeah. Do you realize that you've never been doing the same exact thing? Do you realize that you never are doing the exact same thing over and over again? You're always in a new place mentally and emotionally. It's new people. It's new circumstances. It's a different time. It's a new day. It's frankly, guys, a new moment. All right? Just because you failed in the past, remember this, guys. Remember this with wholeheartedly. It did, just because you failed in the past doesn't mean you're going to fail again. But your survival mind, that chatter that goes on in your mind, doesn't realize that. So you stay trapped in thinking that the future is going to be like the past. So I'm going to give you an example, and then we'll move on to part number two tomorrow. You walk over to a dog, and you pet that dog. And that dog turns around and bites you. What happens, guys, the next time that you see a dog? more than likely you're going to step back and you're going to you're not going to go and pet that dog because you have a fear that it's going to bite you in other words you fight or your fight you fight the deal and you start stepping backwards and you don't take action there is no thinking there is no logic and there's no reason it's just animal instinct like it's like the animal biting you you have an animal instinct not to go and confront the animal the next time survival is a part of our makeup it's a part of what our of, of how we think and it helps us to avoid danger and so we start thinking be careful don't walk around dogs all right but the reality guys do all dogs bite the answer is no but your survival brain doesn't know any difference until you become aware of this it's like just like anything you're not going to be able to break through and so awareness is the key to neutralizing this fear so guys, go back, listen to this recording again today. Tomorrow, I'm going to talk to you about turning your failure in these call and this call reluctance process into a fortune because this is really a very important process that we all must break through. Go back to realprofitbuilders.com, listen to this call again, make sure that you join in tomorrow for the next part of this series that I'm going to be talking about because it's very, very important. I want you guys to have the very best of your days every single moment. And most especially going into the new year, 2019, it's an opportunity for you to have all that you want. And if this is something that's standing in your way, these are some techniques these are some tools that I know will help you break through. I know they've helped me. They've helped thousands of people when you make the decision that you want to change the way you look at things and the things and the things that you get will change for you. So see you tomorrow. Make it a great today. Uh, make it a great day today, and we'll talk to you later. Have a great one. Talk to you soon.